Hi, this is Jack Byer, your American narrowboater. Today, we're going to do a vlog on the Erie Canal. Oh, hi. Yes, this is Jack. Gosh, it's a really beautiful day here in Crystal Beach. It's around 80 degrees Fahrenheit and not a breeze, not a cloud. But I thought I'd take a quick moment to put together a vlog on narrow boating in America. As I mentioned in an earlier vlog, uh, our plans for June narrow boating in England we've had to postpone basically because of the COVID restrictions. We don't know for sure what's going to take place. Hopefully it will, you know, it will be done enough that people can travel in, but we don't want to risk it. So we're pushing it off to further in the year. Instead, my brothers and I were planning a trip on the Erie Canal. So in this vlog, what I want to talk about is some of the early history of the Erie Canal to give you a feel for what it is, canal boating in America for what it is, <laughs> and also how you can go about hiring a narrow boat in the United States. Out that in 1970, the year before my wife and I did narrow boating, we did it in 1976. In 1975, this family from upstate New York along the Erie Canal, they went to England and they experienced a narrow boat holiday. And they were so impressed and had so much fun that they thought, hmm, why don't we go back and build narrow boats for the Erie Canal? And that's what they did. Those narrow boats are called lock masters. It's sort of a, uh, a type of boat <laughs> and it ranges anywhere from 30 feet on up to 42. That, this, this particular family at Mid Lakes Navigation, the largest boat they rent is a 42 footer. There's another firm, uh, Low Bridge, they rent one boat and that one boat is 44 feet. All of them are 10 feet wide so it's a modified narrow boat. Again, we're going to talk about that. You'll get to see the layouts. You'll actually get to go on board. You get to see what the Erie Canal looks like. But to start off with, uh, you know how, how the canal system in, in the UK made the UK the economic powerhouse it was and is uh, during the Industrial Revolution. Well, during our Industrial Revolution, per se, <laughs> that's what the Erie Canal did. And it did for one specific, well, two ports, Buffalo and upstate New York, on the, which shares a, a location with Niagara Falls. And it's between the two lakes, Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. And the other major city that benefited from the Erie Canal was New York City. Right after the American Revolution in the late 1790s, George Washington, he saw the importance of canals and he was responsible for the building of a canal up into the Shenandoah Valley. It followed the Potomac River from Washington on a, and unfortunately it was, a, it was an undertaking that was more than the topography could do. It, uh, the, the amount of elevation and the kind of rock, the granite they had to go through uh, it did get built. It didn't get finished. Uh, George Washington died before that could happen. They ran out of money. And today, if you go to Great Falls, Virginia, you're going to see the remains of that, that uh, canal. But do it, D-E, new word, W-I-T-T, -T, and sometimes it's contracted to one word. DeWitt Clinton, who was governor of New York, he was mayor and governor uh, and senator, all from the state of New York, uh, he stole an idea from a gentleman about how to build a canal across New York State. See, in those days, the big ports in America were Boston, Charleston, and Baltimore. Those were the big three. Now, Philadelphia had a big port, Savannah had a big port, New York, eh, maybe not so much. But with the building of the Erie Canal, New York became the prominent market and city in the United States. So without much further to do, let's start off this vlog. Let's talk briefly about why the Erie Canal took place. It's brief history. I'll show you some great photos I've dug up about early life on the Erie Canal. And then we're going to jump into what's the Erie Canal like today. 
what are the boats like that are on the Erie Canal? What are the boats like the Lockmaster that you can rent? And we'll take a tour of one. And I'll then we'll finally uh, follow it up with, uh, with costs and so forth. So I hope you enjoy this vlog. Let's get to it. The story of the Erie Canal really starts with the topography of the United States as a whole. Up here we got the Great Lakes, here we have New England, and this is the state of New York, which we'll talk about later. But running from Canada all the way down along the eastern seaboard are the Appalachian Mountains, and they stop just shy of Atlanta, Georgia. So if you're living after the Revolutionary War, if you're living over here in the late 1700s, early 1800s, how do you get your goods over here to the coast where the harbors are and where the commerce is? There's no commerce in here. This is just farms and wilderness and huge oak tree forests. So what the farmers did that lived over here is they would have to ship. Here's the Ohio River. Here's the Mississippi. Here's the Missouri they would have to ship their goods on what they called keel boats or even just rafts down here to the port of New Orleans. This would take, you know, months. And with the time, when they got there, they would sell their logs in the raft and then they'd have to do overland back to their farm. Now, if you're growing a product like corn or wheat or a grain crop, Sometimes that, tra that trip down the river took a little too long, and by the time you got down to New Orleans, all you had was you know, a rotten crop. But what I'm trying to show you is we had a pressing need in the early 1800s to get goods and merchandise from this area of the U.S. over here to the East Coast. And the Appalachian Mountains, they really formed a very formidable barrier. If you had corn, coal, uh, iron ore, anything from this side, trying to get it across, you only had a few places you could do it. But over here, up in New York State, we have the Hudson River coming down this way, and this way, we've got the Mohawk River. Here on, here on this map, you can see a uh, close-up of uh, the, the, the proposed route. And again, that was very fortunate that the Mohawk River was a way that cut through the Appalachian Mountains. This river down here is the Hudson River, and it flows directly into New York. Later on, they would build a canal that ran from uh, the Erie Canal up to Lake Champlain, and that would allow shipment of goods from Canada down through the lake, down through the canal into the Hudson River. But that's for another story. <laughs> what we're going to do today is concentrate on the route, the route of the Erie Canal. Here's a close-up of the Erie Canal as it runs from Albany and Troy all the way over to Buffalo. Here's a shot of DeWitt Clinton, the man who built the canal. Clinton put together a group of engineers. Uh, at that time, there were no formal engineers or even surveyors. Uh, two judges who had uh, dealt with surveying issues in terms of border disputes, they actually did the surveying for the Erie Canal. And when it came to engineers, one gentleman, he volunteered on his own dime to travel to Great Britain and talk to the engineers in England about how to build canals. So the, the birthplace of the Erie Canal is really in the UK. The canal they came up with was 363 miles long. It was four feet deep and 40 feet wide. It had 83 locks. All of the locks were 90 feet long. The fall was almost 600 feet from Buffalo down to the Hudson River. The canal was so successful that in 1835, only 10 years after it was built, they had decided to enlarge it. And from 1835 to 1862, they changed all of the locks around 
and and they made the canal seven feet wide. Uh, sorry, seven d feet wide, and seven feet deep. And eighteen, oh, about 1862, they decided that wasn't big enough, so they did the final Erie Canal. It's anywhere from 12 to 23 feet deep, 125 feet. I'm sorry, 120 feet wide. Um, and the locks are 310 feet long, and there's 57 of them. As you've no doubt noticed by now, uh, the Erie Canal boats did not use horses. They used donkeys. The kid you see here is a hoagie, or a mule driver. And it was a family affair, just like it was in England. And the family actually lived on their boat. So this cabin that you see in the back, it's more than just the family's uh, living quarters, it's actually a miniature stable. The kids and family, they would work in shifts. They would walk along the canal for six hours and then six hours off. Then they would switch the team and go for another six. They did this around the clock, 724, so that in four days they could traverse the entire length of the Erie Canal. And that's like, you know, 80 miles in one day. That's fantastic time. In this next slide, you're going to see them actually loading the horses. And that bridge or plank that you see is called a Hoss Bridge, H-O-S-S. -S. And the, uh, they're, they're trying to convince that mule there to actually get down into the, the uh, stable. Then they'll bring up the next one and continue the journey. And besides the horses, the family also lived in there, in that cabin. And here you see them being homeschooled. And they just used magazines that they picked up to learn how to read. Now, besides canal boats and working boats, there were also packets. Those were pulled by horses. They had the right of way. There was an eight mile per hour speed limit, and it was frequently passed over. It went sp speeding by even faster, and they had to pay a $10 fine if they were caught. Notice the passengers were all caught up on the roof of the boat. That's where they preferred to be. And that's why the song Erie Canal has the line, low bridge coming to a town. The passengers had better duck, because if they didn't, <laughs> they got pushed into the drink. Well, things certainly have changed. In this next clip, you'll see a fast forward of a uh, Lockmaster boat going through a typical lock today. This is representative of all the locks on the Erie Canal. They are all single chamber. They're all mechanical. They're all run by a lock keeper. They are 328 feet or 100 meters long, 45 feet or 14 meters wide, with a minimum 12 foot depth of water over the meter sills at the upstream gates upon lift. They can accommodate a vessel of up to 300 feet long and 43.5 feet wide. Hmm, big ones. And what you're seeing here is the Lockmaster boat going through the lock. Uh, I got it at a fast speed. Basically, this looks like a 42 Lockmaster, and this is one of the boats from the Mid Lakes hiring base. Down here, Lockmaster 42. You can look it up. Basically, they're 42 feet length. There's a Lockmaster of 34. I think they go down into the 20s, but the most popular one is the 42. They're all 10 feet wide, which is just basically a little less than a wide beam. They sleep six people if you put two people on the dinette, but there are two cabin staterooms, and it's, they're pretty well laid out. And so let me show you what that layout looks like. As you come in from the stern, you've got the first bath uh, bedroom, and over here you've got your own commode and your own uh, sink. Second bedroom, they have a sink and a hatch opening, but then there's the main bathroom, and it's got a toilet and a shower. Over here is the uh, oven stove. Um, the stove top has three burners. I think you call them hobs. And the dinette settee, that breaks down to a bed if you wish it. It's got a fridge. 
Uh, they run on 110 volt, and uh, while the boat's running, it's producing its own power. It doesn't have any solar panels. Uh, basically, in the well deck, there is a cratch cover, and uh, it's very comfortable, as you'll see when I show you the video of the boat. Here's the uh, boat that we've hired. It's called the Sunflower. It's a one-off, 44 foot long, but the same general layout that you've already seen. This is the family that owns Mid Lakes. They're the ones that went to England, had a great vacation, and decided to build uh, modified narrow boats on the Erie Canal. Uh, all of the boats are diesel, uh, diesels included. They all have uh, big water tanks, and uh, they all have shorelines. And the, most of the places you stop at night, in the towns and villages along the way, they have free moorings with free power. There are a few places where they do charge for the electric hookups, and those are like $17 for the night. Not a big deal. The boats do come with air conditioning, as you can see on the top there, and they come with uh, four bicycles. Uh, okay, let's go down into there. Let's check it out. Okay, I've got this on rabbit speed. <laughs> so we're going down, there's the first bedroom on the left, and we're gonna turn here to the right for a second, and you'll be able to see the bathroom. Uh, this is all knotty pine. It's, it's uh, tongue and groove pine wood, solid wood. To the left, or to the right here, where there, that door is, that's a bathroom. Uh, just uh, all that's in there is the commode. Uh, there's a place to hang your coats, a little closet. Here's the second bedroom, forgive the mess. On your right hand side, you have a full bath here. I'm sorry, you have a half bath here, excuse me, just a sink. This is a hatch cover. Uh, that comes off so that while you're in the lock, you can hold on to the rope and keep the boat to the side. And you need gloves for that too. Wet weather gear, storage, if it was me, they'd be in the back of the boat. Uh, this is the full bathroom. There's a full shower and a toilet. And then here is the kitchen with the dinette, the full sink, a uh, little bread left over from a local store. Uh, that's the stove and what you would call the hob. Uh, let's see, let's look, to, let's look to the front here. Yeah, okay, here's the well deck. And what you see to the right is the dinette that converts into uh, a double berth. And in front of it, right there, that's the recharging station where you've got uh, 110 power to charge your laptops and your phones. Going out into the well deck, uh, you can see it's a full cratch cover all the way around uh, with glassine uh, doorways. And then uh, here's the shot of the cabin. Okay, that should show you pretty much what the boats look like inside and out. Well, that about winds up this uh, American Narrow Boater vlog. Here are some names of hire companies where you can get a boat. And uh, the bottom one there is the equivalent of their CRT. This is an organization that actually, uh, it's like a chamber of commerce. You get all the information you want about Erie Canal at that last organization. Typically, a week on an Erie Canal boat is about $4,000. It isn't cheap, folks. Uh, Low Bridge offers the least amount, and that's like $2,700, $2,800 a week. If you see anything else you want to know, uh, just leave the comments below. Uh, please like, subscribe, and if you want to wait for the next adventure of the American Narrow Boater, click the bell icon. Again, any questions at all about the Erie Canal, just leave them in the comments. Thanks. Have a great day.